everybody. Welcome to study number 18 in the book of Judges in our Search the Scripture study. Today we are on chapter number 21, the very last chapter in this fantastic book of Judges. And then uh, the next lesson will be in 1 Peter. Uh, let's look at a couple questions that we're going to answer from study 21. Number one, the tribes recognized after their victory that in the heat of the moment, They'd gone too far in making the vow that's found in chapter 21 and verse number 1. The sense of the unity of the tribes caused great distress at the thought that one tribe was in danger of being in extinction, in spite of the fact that they had suffered severely at the hands of Benjamin. How did they resolve their dilemma? Did they keep or did they break their second vow? And would you condone the action that they took in verses 10 through 12 and 19 through 23? And what does the whole story suggest in regards to the taking of vows? So pay attention as we read along in the vow that they made concerning the tribe of Benjamin. Question two, to what does the writer attribute this weak and unhappy condition of things in Israel? And do you consider this an adequate explanation of the moral and spiritual condition of Israel? And if not, what would you add? Okay, let's look at Judges chapter number 21 together. Beginning with the first verse, the men of Israel had taken an oath at Mizpah. Now this is that oath they had taken. Not one of us will give his daughter in marriage to a Benjamite. The people went to Bethel, where they sat before God until evening, raising their voices and weeping bitterly. Lord God of Israel, they cried, why has this happened to Israel? Why should one tribe be missing from Israel today? And early the next day, the people built an altar and presented burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. And then the Israelites asked, who from all the tribes of Israel has failed to assemble before the Lord? For they had taken a solemn oath that anyone who failed to assemble before the Lord at Mizpah would be put to death. Now the Israelites grieved for the tribe of Benjamin, their fellow Israelites. Today one tribe is cut off from Israel. They said, How can we provide wives for those who are left, since we've taken an oath by the Lord not to give them any of our daughters in marriage? Then they asked, which one of the tribes of Israel failed to appear before the Lord at Mizpah? And they discovered that no one from Jabesh Gilead had come to the camp for the assembly. For when they counted the people, they found that none of the people of Jabesh Gilead were there. So the assembly sent 12,000 fighting men with instructions to go to Jabesh Gilead and put to the sword those living there, including the women and children. This is what you're to do, they said, kill every male and every woman who is not a virgin. And they found among the people living in Jabesh Gilead 400 young women who had never slept with a man. And they took them to the camp at Shiloh in Canaan. Then the whole assembly sent an offer of peace to the Benjamites at the rock of Ramon. So the Benjamites returned at that time and were given the women of Jabesh Gilead who had been spared. But there were not enough for all of them. The people grieved for Benjamin because the Lord had made a gap in the tribes of Israel, and the elders of the assembly said, With the women of Benjamin destroyed, how shall we provide wives for the men who are left? The Benjamite survivors must have heirs, so that a tribe of Israel will not be wiped out. We can't give them our daughters as wives, since we Israelites have taken this oath. Cursed be anyone who gives a wife to a Benjamite. But look, there is the annual festival of the Lord in Shiloh, which lies north of Bethel, east of the road that goes from Bethel to Shechem, and south of Lebanon. So they instructed the Benjamites, saying, Go and hide in the vineyards and watch. And when the young women of Shiloh come out to join in the dancing, rush from the vineyards, and each of you seize one of them to be your wife. Then return to the land of Benjamin. When their fathers or brothers complain to us, we will say to them, Do us the favor of helping them because we did not get wives for them during the war. You will not be guilty of breaking your oath because you did not give your daughters to them. So that is what Benjamin did. While the young women were dancing, each man caught one and carried her off to be his wife. And then Ray returned to their inheritance and rebuilt the towns and settled in them. And at that time the Israelites left that place and went home to their tribes and clans, each to his own inheritance. And in those days Israel had no king and everyone did as he saw 
fit. Question number one. The tribes recognized after their victory that in the heat of the moment they'd gone too far in making their vow in 21.1, which is to not give their daughters to the Benjamites. The sense of unity of the tribes caused great distress at the thought that one tribe was in danger of extinction in spite of the fact that they had suffered severely at the hands of Benjamin. How did they resolve their dilemma? Did they keep or break their second vow? And would you condone the actions they took in chapter 10, verse 12, and 19 through 23? What does the whole story suggest with regards to taking of vows? Well, Israel obviously acted too quickly in making their vow. Making bold statements in the heat of the moment is rarely a good idea, but something of us, something that many of us are in the habit of doing. So this really left Israel with a very difficult dilemma that involved further bloodshed and involved the victimization of innocent young women. As to whether or not I condone the actions of Israel in this chapter, that's really kind of beside the point. It really appears that the Lord did condone it. There's no indication that he did not. I think it's rather sad that other people ended up being cursed, if you will, because of the rash vow uh, that Israel had made. Question number two, to what does the writer attribute this weak and unhappy condition of things in Israel, and do you consider this an adequate explanation of the moral and spiritual condition of Israel, and if not, what would you add? Well, the writer of this portion of Judges seems to be indicating uh, the need for a king to bring order and direction. Obviously, this was written during the time of the kings. Uh, the reality is that they did have a king, the king of kings, but uh, instead they chose to follow the will of man instead. Thus, each one did, as it says in the very final verse of Judges 25, as he saw fit in his own eyes. And doing what we see fit is rarely a good idea. I hope today that Jesus Christ is the king of your life and that you are doing what he wants you to do rather than doing what seems fit in your own eyes. Because our fallen nature is rarely, rarely capable of making a very good decision. So make him your king. Put him in control. I hope you're having a great day. And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. God bless.